Steph and I met, um, boy, almost 15 years ago. Um, a mutual friend introduced us, and we've been, been together ever since. We've been married 10 years. Actually celebrated our 10 year anniversary here at the hospital. We adopted Max um, when he was 11 months old. We brought him home from Russia. He's five now, so he's been, he's been with us as long as he can remember, and, and as long as we can remember too. And then Mara we adopted, she's one. She was born in July. Neither one of us have ever spent a day in the hospital that I can, I can remember. She's, we've never been sick, we've never, she's, I mean, she's always been active. She, she goes to the gym a lot, she chases two kids around, she, she works part time, she's never been, never been sick. She called me at work and she said she was feeling lightheaded, dizzy when she would stand up. Went to a different urgent care clinic. Um, they took blood, blood saturation there and it was in the 80s and they said, you should be on an ambulance to, to the hospital right now. Maybe, maybe some pneumonia, I think, is what we thought. Maybe she had just some pneumonia that people get all the time, and you, you take, a, take an antibiotic and you're okay. The Wednesday after we got there, they took a lung biopsy. So that's kind of when it, it hit me that, okay, they don't know what's going on, and uh, this, is, this is getting a little bit scary. Her test results started to trickle in, and every single thing that they tested for was negative. So whether it be a virus or like a, a foreign substance in her lungs or infection, she, she's never had an infection. But in the meanwhile, her condition, her condition continues to, to deteriorate. Nine days after she was admitted into the hospital, um, they actually intubated her and they continued to, to up ventilator settings until she was completely maxed out and still, still failing. So at that point, we had a, a horrible meeting with the doctor. Steph's family was in town and, and my family was there as well. And he said, we think maybe she's got 24 hours to live, tops. Um, at that point, he said, we can try to get you a, a transfer. From his perspective, that was really the only, her only hope at that point. So. We of course said, "Do it, you know. Go do what you have to do. Let's let's do it. Let's do it." And I'll I'll never forget. He he kind of stopped at the door and turned around and said, "I don't think you guys understand how transfers work, right? It's going to take it's going to take a while to find a hospital that'll take her, a hospital that think that they can do something for her." He said, "I'm not. I'm not. I want you to to prepare because I'm not even convinced she would survive." It's probably the worst day of of all of our lives, to be honest with you. It really felt like a like a funeral, like we were saying, saying goodbye. He actually told us within maybe a half hour of starting to make phone calls that Iowa City's got a bed, they'll take her. It took then some time to prep her to get on the helicopter and, and things like that, but within two hours of that, that horrible meeting, she was in the air uh, headed to, to Iowa City. Our first meeting with the doctors were more, were more hopeful. Um, they talked a little bit about ECMO, or whatever's attacking her lungs, is still attacking her lungs. It's bad, they're very stiff, they're very sick. Um, she's, in, she's in really bad shape. And it was like that for, for the better part of three weeks. So during that time, I got to know the, the ECMO team pretty well. They're stationed in a room 24 seven. So I would pick their brains, middle of the night, anytime. The turning point for me, and I, I would have to go back and look at notes as to everything going on, but it was Halloween night. It was about nine o'clock at night. Doctors' meetings were a little bit more encouraging. Um, everything we're hearing on the ECMO side was she's doing she's doing some of the work on her own now. Everybody here that, that we've worked with has been has been really good. I joke around with the the ECMO nurses and things like that that they should have a minor in psychiatry, right? Because as things were bad, they were they were who I leaned on a lot to to try to say what are we looking for, what's going on, all that kind of stuff, and they were they were amazing. They really were. They were caring for both of us. Um, they actually chipped in and bought me a, a gym membership here. Um, the nurses did and said, you know, get out of here. I think things are going okay. Everybody tells us we've got a long, a long road to recovery. Her lungs are still relatively sick. Rehab is a, an awesome word. Um, instead of, is she gonna survive? It's, it's more focused now on how good, how good can she get? How much can she rehab? I think we both probably have a new perspective on, on life. Um, I've thought a lot about what do you do with a, with a second chance at life, and I, I don't know what the answer to that is. I don't know how this, I don't know how this changes our life for sure, but I know it, it changes it, right? It, it can't be the same.